We now have science to back up what our thoughts do and how they make our bodies weak. A lot of scientists who are actually studying this with behavioral kinesiology and other ways, showing that thoughts make your body weak. And thoughts pretty much create your reality. They create what you're going to, what you're going to think about yourself. If you're fat that you think you're wonderful, you'll be wonderful. But most women are, we're, we're compared all the time with impossible images from Barbie to, to models. And so we think that our, our whole currency is how we look and how other people are gonna perceive us. And we're always up against impossible standards. What is relative to their own emotional addiction are movies and dramas and news and all the media that is so beautiful today and providing people with experiences without having to be there. And yet, and yet, that does, de does not define human greatness. They're so hypnotized by their environment through the media, through television, through people living and creating ideals that everybody struggles to become, that no one can actually become in terms of physical appearance and definitions of beauty and valor that are all illusions that most people surrender and live their life in mediocrity and they may live that life and the soul may never really their desire may never really rise to the surface so they may want to be something else but if it does rise to the surface and uh, they ask themselves if there is something more or why am I here what is the purpose of life? Where am I going? What happens when I die? They start to ask those questions. They start to flirt and interact with the perception that they may be having a nervous breakdown. And in reality, what they're doing is that their old concepts of how they viewed their life in the world start to fall apart. That's why very few people make this journey, because it's deeply unsettling. All of the molds that we have lived by have to be broken, and we have to liberate ourselves in this way. And sometimes there's an awkward period between the comfort that we knew before and the real state of comfort when we are the Lord of our being, which follows that interval of chaos. Most people, when they get into the chaos, give up hope and go back to the old false securities. They get to live a reasonable life and they get to die in some sort of peace, but they haven't advanced spiritually at all in that experiment that we call the life. We're in completely new territory in our brain. And because we're in completely new territory, we're rewiring the brain, literally reconnecting to a new concept. Then ultimately, it changes us from the inside out. If I change my mind, will I change my choices? If I change my choices, will my life change? Why can't I change? What am I addicted to? What will I lose that I'm chemically attached to? And what person place, thing, time, or event that I'm chemically attached to that I don't want to lose because I may have to experience the chemical withdrawal from that. Hence the human drama. This life is but a page in an enormous book in which we will always be who we are, but always with the inherent needling of ambitious pursuit 
a pursuit that takes us from the boring tedium of self-reflection of self-hate and to self-creation of new dreams. And we are ambitious gods. It's the only planet in the Milky Way that has habitation that is steeped in enormous subjugation of religion. You know why that is? Is because people have set up right and wrong. I did say there is no right and wrong. Does that mean that it's a free for all? Absolutely not. I mean, the problem that I have with right and wrong in those categories it's not that I want to free for all, but that right and wrong doesn't go nearly far enough. They have never sinned. They have never wronged. Wronged, yes, in moral confrontations with society. But that's their adversity. That's why they're here. To wrong, to learn, to search. And use the wisdom of that to create yet greater dreams. There's nobody keeping records up there. The records are here, and I'm going to have to deal with them. That's far more painful than a record-keeping God up, up in the skies. So anyone who's setting out on the path of enlightenment will be absolutely impeccable in everything that they do. Is it because of fear of damnation? No. Or of the punishment of God? Or because I have sinned and haven't got forgiveness? No, no, no. I mean, these are all excuses that keeps us away from the real problem. The really uh, enlightened person will see every action has a reaction with which I must deal. And if I'm wise, I'm not going to do stuff that will cause me to have to face it and resolve it and balance it in my soul later. That's the real criterion. That God or the, the fundamental level of reality, depending on what people describe, it really, I mean, theoretically, it should be everywhere. Uh, it's something, you know, exactly how it would manifest or, or how God would manifest in the world uh, is a more complicated issue. But uh, I think that, that certainly from a more traditional religious perspective, pe people have kind of gotten away from God the, the person. There's been a great shift from God up there or out there or in there, wherever, to the God within. And that's an improvement, but we don't want to get some idea that, that, that God can be within and still be separate, which is what most people think. They think the God within is like some of those alien movies, you know, where some being breaks out from my chest. God is not within in that uh, stupid sense. What it means is uh, that in God we live, move, and have our being, that we ourselves, in fact, are divine. What's the relation between my God self and your God self? There is no relationship because it's only one God self. It's in both of us. All people are divine people. Is it not ironic that all would say that this is the voice of the devil or that this is heresy? If this is heresy, then what is promised to everyone is an imbuement with God that is inseparable. Knowledge allows the brain to begin to become wired, and we will begin to see what has always existed but because we live in those routine automatic programs, we're unable to see because we're processing mind from the familiar. To learn knowledge means we're learning new things. And to learn new things means we're gathering information and creating the circuitry now to begin to develop the sensitivity, to begin to see things for the first time. There is enormous potential to change the kind of behaviors and characteristic patterns that we've fallen into. In fact, if you've listened and have remembered anything that I've said, your physiology is different than it was before that. That is something that Eric Kandel, the recent winner of the Nobel Prize, 